Welcome back to the Eric Crown Crypto Channel. Wishing you a happy and healthy start to this nice macro Sunday morning over here. I wanted to follow up some very, very high term time frame ideas that we've been looking at on this channel for the past couple of months. One of them slowly coming to the end of its particular setup and what that means for the more intermediary term and then also the very, very long term as well. Looking at a few uh, completely new charts actually today and coming at it from a slightly different angle as well. Other than that, I want to once again humbly request that if you do find this content valuable or useful, well, guess what? You can't watch it anymore unless you like the video. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> it's like, obviously you can. Doesn't even matter that much. Doesn't even make that much of, a, much of a difference, at least so I'm told. All right, sweet. Let's just jump right on into it, starting off right in over here with the five-day time frame chart. So this is the one that we've been running off of for the past couple months now, going in from base or relevant basically like the mid of, uh, of, of last December, which was giving us a major upside bias due to the volatility versus stochastic momentum signature. So of course, if you're new on this channel, what, what are we talking about? We're talking about extreme lows on volatility represented by this indicator, the BBWP indicator, expanding from those extreme lows, which is mathematically a certainty, coupled with the direction of the stochastic oscillator, which was in this case to the upside, has led to these stats, uh, whoops, uh, these stats over here. Um, which actually I can better show you as I put it into a nice little spreadsheet over here. My spreadsheets, yes, my spreadsheets are nice and clean and uh, and, and a little bit easier to dissect. So you know what? Let's go through it. Uh, I've I've documented all 11 times that we've seen this particular setup in Bitcoin's history, like the full history, going all the way back to the Genesis, all the way back to where this whole thing was born from Satoshi's little nutsack, which I hear that it was actually uh, maybe something else. Anyways, um, <laughs> we're getting into some 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 dark places today. I think. Uh, anyways, what I wanted to talk about here, however, is that this particular setup uh, with these statistics. Um, uh, let me just actually write this in because that would make this make a lot more sense. Um, has been relevant. So the average return on this particular setup has been about a 43% move um, to the upside. Of course, we can look at the first standard deviation as well. We can say that might even expand, extend in more critical um, setups towards uh, you know another 10% towards 53% uh, or so. But here's the thing: is that on average we do expect this setup to take about 33 and a half days. Why am I bringing this up right now? Well. From the time that this one uh, particularly set off, which was over here, to where Bitcoin is right now, we're on day like number 30 at the moment. So uh, this setup is incredibly mature, meaning that if we are going to see another push to the upside, it very likely happens within this next five, maybe 10 at most uh, day spread. Um, yes, there have been some times where we've seen this one take. Uh, a little bit longer, but generally speaking, like 40 days is is, is kind of like the most uh, that we've really seen um, with the average more or less around 35, as you can see over here. And, and this is actually the standard deviation, so 10 days. So that technically mean 45 days, but you know, again, going through the data right here, there's really only one time where we even saw it uh, get above 40, and that was, or sorry, actually two times, I apologize. Uh, but these were kind of like ma major outliers, so to speak. Anyways, um, one of them happening like really, really early on in Bitcoin's history. Anyway, so what does that essentially say? It essentially says that Bitcoin's maybe a bit of a, uh, you know, a bit of a race against time here. Um, uh, at least going off of that data, it would suggest that if we're going to see another leg up, probably happens within this next five day spread. Most likely, the more time that things take upon that, basically before this this next coming Friday, the more and more likely Bitcoin's to put in a local high right here and at minimum trade sideways uh, for a while. Um, where we probably actually uh, can start to reference the next daily setup, which is starting to brew, but not relative. Uh, sorry, not relevant just yet. So, 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 so. Let me just reference my notes over here. Okay. Yep. All right. We got that. And here's the thing. Also, kind of playing into that uh, analysis that you know Bitcoin's in a bit of a race against time. Dixie, the dollar index, which typically trades uh, inverse of, of risk assets, Bitcoin included, especially on the higher term timeframes, um, is starting to put in a major low. In fact, last week, this past week, was the first time that we've really seen Dixie actually like have a, a you know a strong close into the end of the week, bouncing off the 0.5 Fibonacci retracement from basically where this rally began uh, back on over in like May of 2021. So, you know, I, I am looking at this starting to put in a low here. Uh, these things probably going to take some time, um, especially after, you know, basically like one, two, three, four, five, four months of just straight downside. Like it's not going to be one week. It's probably going to trade sideways here for a little bit. But after that period, I would be looking, you know, more than likely for risk assets, uh, including Bitcoin, to trade at least sideways and probably try some downside as well. So uh, that would kind of play into the time analysis that we're looking at over here. 
Um, and uh, and obviously we have we have CPI coming up. It's either this week or next week. I realize that my computer's battery is uh, well. It's gonna be a race against time for me as well, baby. Let's see if we can fucking do it. Uh, okay, but here's the thing. Long term, um, I do want to put into perspective at least what the data is saying as to where Bitcoin is. Um, you know, you know, in the grand scheme of things. Um, so one, once this does start rallying, yeah, you probably do see some, you know, some downside on Bitcoin, at least sideways for a while. Uh, but ultimately, it is really starting to look like this is put in like a major high. And that correlates well with several of the other setups that we've seen over here. I promise I'll bring in some new stuff as well. But I wanted to go over this one first with the monthly stochastic essentially, um, you know, being pretty damn good and getting some macro lows. In fact, it's gotten all of the prior macro lows when we do see the monthly stochastic in this critical zone cross to the upside. And a couple things of interest have happened here. Not only uh, has that cross happened as of uh, February 1st, but also it is playing out this, this bounce on a trend line, which would indicate hidden bullish divergence of one, two, three, four drives variety, which would be rather interesting. Um, I've also gone ahead and back tested the first major move off of the lows for the prior three times that we've seen it cross within this critical zone here. And that first major move was about 250% or, or a little bit above there. Um, to put that in perspective, you know, if Bitcoin plays 250% off the current lows, I mean, that would put it like... I, I, I'm not saying that this is going to happen. In fact, I don't think this is going to happen. Uh, but that would, that would be like well into the $50,000 territory. Um, uh, but just to give you an idea, you know, it, it wouldn't be like so far-fetched uh, based off of that to be looking for, you know, a move even half of that into the mid-30s, perhaps, um, you know, maybe sometime later this year. Again, we're talking about very long term here. This is not happening today, not happening tomorrow. And I also want to say that depending upon how this week goes, you know, you might see at some point you're probably, I mean, reason you're probably going to see a test reasonably close to the current lows maybe not like exactly at it but like let's say i don't know even low 20s would be fair game over some amount of time i mean all of the prior bitcoin uh macro lows have kind of tested um at least once around it uh you know decently close let's say anyways moving on to the next chart i wanted to go over this chart uh this is the daily exponential moving average chart um what we're looking at specifically let me just get rid of everything except for the relevant ones that would be this and that uh, we're looking at the silver cross, which is the green 55 and the yellow 21. When the lower period crossed to the above the higher period, we've noticed throughout the full history of Bitcoin, um, of which there's been many iterations, by the way, like like a lot, <laughs> uh, going through, again through the full history of it, um, there's been an average move of, of almost 82%. Um, from that cross. Uh, now, of course, there have been several several iterations where there it's just been complete failures. Uh, there was one somewhat recently, I'd even say as well. Uh, this was back right before the FTX debacle uh, in November. And then before that, obviously on the bull trap that we saw in March of last year. Um, but you'll notice that these and, and, and all prior ones that were bull traps were relatively low percentage moves before turning back down. To put this into perspective, this current move from the cross uh, happened over here to our current high is about 31 and a half percent so kind of you know a lot greater than those prior ones so I, I do think that that kind of suggests that it's less likely um, not impossible but less likely and again if we're going off of the average move here um, again from that cross given let me just measure this out properly okay boom it happened like right yes it happened right here what would 80 what would like 80 percent on top of current price action look like that would put bitcoin in the heart of thirty thousand dollar territory which is uh actually you know pretty damn close to the 618 fib right there so um you know another area of interest as well um other than that as i reference my notes again let me just make sure okay we've got that one yeah the falling pizzas here i'm not going to even reference that i really do not like patterns in general sometimes they work sometimes they don't you know this one over here obviously worked um and maybe this greater one works as well and that one does have a measured move like significantly higher that would be close closer to that fifty thousand dollar area um but that's not my main way of doing I, I look at most patterns as jesus toast i'm a, i look at most things as jesus toast honestly <laughs> um, you know for better or worse uh but hey if it works for you more power to you i'm i'm, I'm very happy that you're making god god Godless amounts of money, or godless amounts of money, like, does that even make sense? I don't know, just a shit ton of money, okay? Whatever. If you're fucking happy with it, who cares? Who cares what someone else's opinion is? Um, anyways, uh, something new that I want to speak about, or it's maybe not necessarily new, but we haven't spoken about it in a while, is the net unrealized profit and loss over here, which... 
Um, we have seen, again, throughout all uh, you know macro lows, print relatively similar reads in this uh, light blue color. That that would be the actual nuple. Um, and uh, yeah, this first one in 2012 was like you know extreme, ex you know, it's extremely lower than the, pro the, the than the past three. Uh, but obviously, Bitcoin was a lot you know younger at that time. It, you know, within the context of the past three, the one that we just saw over here was. Um, the uh, the third lowest actually uh, you could even probably draw a trend line there as well some some good old Jesus toast lines um, but ultimately you know it gives us an idea that hey you know it, it it's it's more than likely that Bitcoin's at least put in a, a, a tremendously powerful low here that it will work off of. And if it is going to come down, it comes down much later, you know, much later in time wise, let's say, uh, maybe like end end of this year or 2024, um, not in the direct, you know, immediate future. At least that's what I kind of think um, based off of this. Uh, also, what I forgot is to talk about the old hash ribbons, which I completely left out over here. Let me just bring them up really, really quickly. Boom. Okay. Yeah. Yes, what's my piece about? Nah, damn it, this isn't the right one. You bastard, how dare you, TradingView? I completely, <laughs> completely shot myself in the foot because I named it the wrong thing. There we go. Okay, here we go. Fundamentals hash also could be, <laughs> well, that could be many things, in fact. Uh, many things that we won't talk about in Dubai. Uh, anyway, anyways, weekly time frame. So I've gotten a lot of mess about this where, uh, where basically people will say, but crown, this happened on the daily. It's like, I'm not, I don't care about the daily. <laughs> Don't care about the daily. The weekly being a higher time frame does have better uh, confirmation with these signals. Anyways, what is a signal you might be asking? The signal is this. When the hash ribbon signal a blue buy indication over here, the prior low to that blue buy signal has been a low that has never been closed below ever again in all of these past iterations, except for one. <laughs> Which one was it? It was the most recent one, by the way. <laughs> the most recent one in August. August, where obviously that that popped off at about uh, like 38,000 bucks. Bitcoin came way below there later on. But uh, but again, or sorry, there's two times, two times. That time, and then obviously the time, uh, actually, yeah, then uh, and then the time over here in 2019, uh, that was off of the Rona dump. Um, you know, bit bit of an outlier, you might say, bit of a black swan, uh, but still two two times out of uh, I think it's like 18. So again, you know, I, I, just looking at these sort of things does make me lean towards the side of hey, if Bitcoin is going to get a major downside move, it's probably going to be a higher low. It's probably going to be an opportunity. Um, so then for the last thing that I want to go into, uh, the monthly chart over here, a few things with this one. One, we do see that the monthly jewel has officially turned, or it's, it's trying to turn um, light cyan, which would be a full-on signal, uh, I suppose, but it has confirmed a full-on white signal, which obviously needs to, you know, precipitate the light blue signal. The last few times that we've seen this, what do you know? Oh, they've been literal macro. It's not, it's not even that the macro, it was the macro low, like the macro low was already in and, you know, upside pressure started to amount. Um, same thing over here with the monthly, uh, RSI having hidden bullish divergence. Um, and in this case, you know, again, it almost marks off the same areas um, in one case before in one case a little bit after. But, you know, you get the idea. Uh, anyways, that has also confirmed as of last month's closure as well. In fact, even the quarterly, which is not closing at the end of this month, it'll close um, at the end of March going into April, is also going to be printing potential hidden bullish ever and assuming that Bitcoin closes, you know, anywhere here or higher. Uh, shit, even if, if the quarterly even closes above like twenty five and a half thousand bucks, I do think it'd be difficult not to. Uh, look at that as a, as a setup for Bitcoin going into the mid, maybe even deep 30s um, in the next uh, in the next following quarter. Anyways, um, I think that's a good place for me to be leaving off on this particular video. A little bit on the longer side, but I hope that this was in some way helpful, giving a bit of perspective on the more immediate term and then threading that into the higher term timeframes. Because uh, you know, if things do come down again, I do think that it's it's more than likely to put in a higher low than not. And um, and and that's even you know a question that remains to be seen in the short term. Like I said, this next week, if we're going to see continue, if there is going to be continuation, it's most likely this next week. Oh, and I forgot to talk about like, what would the targets be? <laughs> For fuck's sake, man, totally goofed that one up. Uh, you know, we've already made it to the average, but the first standard deviation would be where? Where would that be? Do I already know where it is? Well, yes, yes, I do, because I've done this a million fucking times, like mid to low $25,000 territory. There you go. All right.
As always, uh, forgot to shill Bybit. Bybit's got their shill link in the description below. Great place to get wrecked on because I got 0% on maker fees for derivative contract orders. Um, yeah, now it's my time to say, as always, or what do I say? I don't know. Goodbye. <laughs> Take care. Much love and see you hopefully soon.